magnitude 4 earthquake and swarm has hit southeast of Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. As we know, this is an area where we have a mantle plume. As we can see here, it goes from Baja going into the area towards Yellowstone. That's the eastern branch of it, but there's also a western branch of this mantle plume that goes on the west coast, feeding all the high threat volcanoes of California. This is the area of Long Valley Caldera supervolcano, close to the area where we've had the quakes and swarms. We'll see the map, of course. Mono Lake here is on the top, and the Inyo craters are around the area of the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano, which is a very high threat volcano. And it basically looks a lot like Yellowstone. It has, as you can see, areas of dying trees because of the heat underneath. Of course, we have magma, and uh, they do have a geothermal plant there. And uh, it looks a lot like Yellowstone, especially the tree kill areas, as you can see right here. But let's go to the map, and we can see not many people reported feeling it because, in fact, there's no, hardly anybody living there. It's about 100 people living in the area. But let's take a look at the swarm as well. Now, what you'll notice very closely is that this earthquake shook the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. It was so intense, even though it was about 50 miles southeast. It's above 2.5 for the past week. The blue is today's quakes. And this is what we're looking at. Shallow 5.8, it's about three, four miles down at Goldfield, Nevada, Goldfield, Nevada. And uh, we did have another one here in San Diego, two and a half, Carlsbad. But when we look at the quakes in the area, you can see what has been going on there since that four magnitudes right here. You can see that's why I said swarm, because it's exactly that area, Goldfield, okay? Okay, now, of course, we'll go back and take out most of the quakes because otherwise we'll just get confused watching all these things. Okay, there we go, that's better. And this is it right here. This is the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano right here, as you can see. And this is our quake. And this is the quake pinned on our Google Earth. This is where it was, and this is Long Valley Caldera, the supervolcano. This is Mono Lake and the Inyo craters right here. And it's basically north of Ridge Crest, which is right here. Ridge Crest is right here. Now going back to the maps, so you can see the shake, the shake out of the area. This is it right here. And um, just to get a better idea of where, how big the shaking is. Okay, this is, as a point of reference, the uh, Mendocino Ridge. And this is the San Andreas Fault. This is the Hayward Fault. This is the Garlic Fault. And the San Andreas and the Garlic are locked. This is the Walker Lane Fault System which is a series of faults, as you can see. It's not one fault, it's a series of fault, faults. And uh, San Andreas takes up 75% of the subduction pressure from the Pacific Plate under the North American Plate. And the Walker Lane fault system takes up the other 25%. And as we saw before, the mantle plume coming from Baja and pointing towards Yellowstone, which is right here, goes this way. That's what we saw before, that diagonal line. But that's just the eastern part of it because there's a western part that goes underneath the west coast right here. The Walker Lane Fault System, 25% of the subduction pressure, and it's also uh, pushing in towards the Cascadia Arc right here. And that's why when we have a lot of earthquakes north of Vancouver, uh, we usually get a repercussion from the pressure around Ridgecrest. And why is that? Because this is where most of these faults, of course, is not one line, it's just a series of faults, and that's where they usually hit. Okay, so this is uh, the quake that we had today. 
this the quake swarm, but this is the 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 four magnitude quake, the shallow four magnitude quake, and um, unfortunately they only show us one block of it, one square, uh, whereas if we were to extrapolate these lines, they would be going out a lot uh, wider into a, a, a more of a space. And let's put in our, uh, if, you, if you'd like to see the, okay, the cities are right here, in your craters. And uh, this is around the area of, uh, uh, okay, there we go. That's a long valley called there right there. We have all these faults right there. And it's about uh, 50 miles distance. 50 miles distance. Let's go. I think I've, I've already, okay. Is it, was I right? 50 miles? Yeah, about 50 miles from Long Valley Caldera is where it struck. And let's go back to our map right there. So we have an idea of Long Valley Caldera right there, the Mono Lake in your craters. And let's go back to our aerial. Okay, that's Fresno right here. Salinas is where we have the San Andreas and Hayward Fault Salinas meeting. And let's go to our aerial again. Okay, now you know where we are. And you can see how much it shook. And that's only one square. Unfortunately, they don't extrapolate. They don't give us the whole area. They just stop it right there. And we'll go to the population. You'll see there's hardly anybody there. I'm going to take up some, some of these things. So you can see that there's nobody there. No population whatsoever. No population whatsoever. Did anyone report it? Yes, eight people reported it, even though nobody lives there. Eight people reported it. It may, must be because they felt it elsewhere, in areas where that have people living. I don't know. Fresno, maybe. Who knows? But um, it was shallow. And it was four magnitude uh, next to the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. And this is it on uh, our volcano discovery, the location of Long Valley Caldera, 17 by 32 kilometers caldera east of the central Sierra Nevada range, is the result of a giant explosive eruption that happened 760,000 years ago and form the widespread and voluminous Bishop Tuff. The caldera has been showing unrest in recent years in the form of deformation of the caldera floor and earthquake swarms. It contains numerous hot springs and fumaroles in order to better study and monitor the caldera. In possible further changes, USGS established the Long Valley Observatory. The background is, following the Bishop Tuff eruption and formation of Long Valley caldera, 760,000 years ago, activity continued in the central part of the caldera to form a lava dome. Smaller explosive eruptions of rhyodacite pumice occurred as well from outer ring fracture events, and last activity was about 50,000 years ago. In its early history, the caldera contained a large lake where the new lava dome formed an island. Beach deposits can be seen on the caldera walls today, Later, the lake drained through the Owens River Gorge. The younger Inyo craters overlap the caldera on the northwest, but are chemically and tecton tectonically distinct from Long Valley Magmatic System. Well, they say that it's distinct from the Long Valley Magmatic System, whereas we recently had the uh, geologist telling us that there is a mantle plume. There is a mantle plume here going into Yellowstone and also to the west here. So um, there is a mantle plume there, according to the geologists. OK, this is the simplified geologic, uh, geo, uh, geologic map. And as we said, the latest activity 50,000 years ago. Some of the pictures, Long Valley photos is here. 
turquoise water from a river along a small valley with fumaroles. Cinder cones, one of the frequent signs of young volcanic activity along our way through the Rift Valley and into the FR Triangle. Rift Valley. Okay, this is it. And they don't have uh, today's earthquake here. This is going back March, um, well, today, but it's not um, the one that we're talking about. They're talking about the ones that are right in the volcano. They're not in California. They're not talking about the Nevada quake that we had, which is just across the border, as you can see. Okay, and going back to the aerial. Here we are, our aerial. And that's a tremendous amount of shaking, as you can see. So all of you there, please be very careful. Now we do have um, uh, instances where this area is active because of the big earthquakes around Ridgecrest. We have the July 4th and 5th, the 5th, July 5th, 7.1 magnitude. And we also had um, earthquake swarms in Long Valley and also in Yellowstone. But this happened again 20 years ago, when we had a seven, last time we had a 7.1 magnitude, again in Ridgecrest, we had an uptick in earthquake swarms in Long Valley and Yellowstone because of the fact that it's such a big earthquake. It jolts the uh, faults, and it's a normal thing happening. And we remember that this is all volcanic fields. Ridgecrest earthquake happened in the coastal volcanic field, which is not far at all from uh, Long Valley Caldera. Let's go here. Okay. Now we'll go here because we can measure, if you want to measure, how far that, it, that is from Long Valley. Here we go. Okay. You can see a beautiful lava flow there, and it's still very clean and pristine. Okay. That's it. Ridge Chris is right there. You can see the um, base there. Okay, let's go. Let's go and start here and measure. We'll measure from here to here. 130, well, 135 miles, okay? That's the distance between Ridgecrest and Long Valley Caldera. So it's not that far. And uh, besides the fact that they have the same mantle plume feeding them. I'll leave links below for you for this. And all of you there, please be very careful. Please be very careful. Wash your hands. Stay uh, at least three feet away from everybody. And don't shake people's hands. You can just put your hands together, palms together, and say namaste. The namaste type. Bow to them with your little hands together. That's very cute, and uh, that's fine. You can still love them that way, even though you're far away. God bless you all. Please be very careful. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.